Hey guys, and welcome back to another edition of Crow Eye Truck TV. And you can tell from from the, the background, I guess, and, and the environment, we're out and about. Of course, we're out and about in the northwest of England, and in the northwest of England, at this time of the year, it's cold and wet, so no exception there. We're going to come back to something we looked at, you know, quite some time ago to see how it's improved and involved because as you know our EV world is involving pretty much every day and, and I guess for me to be able to talk about these things it's a great privilege. Pro I Truck TV spends a lot of time now really looking at everything that we can possibly look at from a green world, alternative fuels and all the things that, uh, that really make a difference to, to all the guys out there on the ground. A lot of guys are looking at these as company cars as well because the BIK is super important for people, especially in the current world. And with fuel screaming out of control, electric cars are really becoming more and more popular every single day. So today we're looking at the Jaguar I-Pace. And as I said before, we've touched on this car quite some time ago, but when it first came out, and I want to see what it's like after a couple of years, I'm hoping we're going to see some great things. It's got a lot going on for it. You know, Jaguar have invested millions into their operations in the Midlands for an EV control centre where they're producing all the EVs for the world. And, 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 and for me, to be able to look at something that's manufactured in the UK is a great experience. And I'm hoping they're doing it some real justice. So the car itself, you know, it looks pretty much the same. Um, I'm hoping that the inside will prove to be much well, better than that, I'm hoping. But uh, it's not a bad looking thing. I think they could have done more with it in the new model. But look, let's face it, it's amazing colour, looks the part. And I'm happy to be able to be able to look at it again, really happy. It's a crossover SUV, 90 kilowatt batteries. It's got a, a range on paper of around 300 miles. Um, I have to say, in the real world, and the, will, the way we've been driving it around, and maybe that's my, my right foot, I'm not seeing that. And it's winter, it's cold, but I'd like to say that we were getting much more than that, but we're not. We're certainly getting in the, in the region of 240 to 250 miles. I'd, I also think that's probably somewhere I'm me driving that, um, because a car like this, you'd expect to get in the region of 3 miles to the kilowatt hour. So I suppose there's a little bit of work for me to do to try and to try and hold that back. But it is also new, and it takes a while for the for the cars to, to be more in tune the way you drive. And I think we'll we'll get some increases in that. But that's currently what we're seeing. So not nothing like we're getting on paper. But I think it's homework for me. More I can do to get better out of that than than, than we're currently seeing. Other than that, we've got you know quite a. A big enough car, you know, got my stuff in there today. Not a bad, not a bad size boot really for, for, for an SUV. But to be honest, you know, realistically, big car like that, a bit more in the boot, maybe. So I suppose in the boot, not huge. Enough room for most people, but we've, I found a bonnet at the front. Let's see what's under that. Let's have a quick look. I'm sure it's voluminous to make up for the back. Let's have a look. Oh, electric as everything is these days. Let's have a quick look. Ah, um, enough room in there for your cable, I guess. Um, but hey ho, let's take it out for a run. Have a look in the cockpit, see what we're getting for the money. Ooh. So, here we go. So let's get uh, belted up. So, we've been out in the car. For, for, for a while today and, and we're just getting back in now um, and we have uh, 62% left um, a range of 135 miles and, and we've done pretty much as we said around about 100 or so miles and which is give me a real feel for for this car I have to say I'm super impressed with the way it drives the turning circles the way it drives the cockpit the way it like that is much better than 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 version one, should I say. Let's stick it into one button for drive. Um, and we're off. And, oh my God, is it quick. <laughs> yeah, it's really quick. Really, really quick. 
you know, um, it's for, for, a, for a size of a car, an SUV, four wheel drive, you like, it is just, it's just absolutely lovely and well appointed, really well finished off now. And of course you can tell it's from, from the Land Rover stable. Um, the, the, the full appointment is just, just amazing. You know, it really is lovely. I'd say 90 kilowatt batteries. This car will onboard at, uh, you know, up to 110 kilowatts, which, which is, is, is pretty good. You know, I have to say, because uh, most cars today, it's 50 kilowatts or, or 80, 110. It's, it's, that's, that's pretty special because you can charge this thing from 20% to, to 80% in, in 45 minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's straight into it, just boom, charge up and you're on your way. And that, that's great because that's the killer for most electric cars. You know, it's seven kilowatt or 50 kilowatt charging. This will take 11 kilowatt charging, so your home charge at seven, or a lot of charges that are, you know, 22 kilowatt will onboard at, at 11 kilowatts. It's not brilliant, but it's better than most. But it's, it's, I have to say, it drives massively. It's really positive, positive steering, really quiet. Yeah, top class, it is great stuff. But of course it should be, because these are not cheap. You know, um, as, a, as a lot of the big electric cars are not, this is not cheap, but it sits in, really well with the um with the others i think from for me i think one of the great things about this car is is they've brought some really great cool gadgets and bits and pieces to the screens and bits and, and all of this kind of interesting stuff i think all of that kind of thing is great part part of me says you know that's that nav is is, is a bit old-fashioned a bit tired it's a bit you know but it made it brought it into a new concept that makes it kind of um interesting i think it's standard you know all of these stuff is but all of this kind of equipment as well the climate the way we do heated seats it's all good it's all really good really laid out i think I'm a, i feel a little bit cramped and i'm certainly not um not a big guy you know so if, if there was a uh, you know anyone north of six foot you know maybe more than 14 15 stone i think you'd probably have a you know a challenge in in, in the cockpit i think it's a bit tight a bit cramped um but again, for, for around the middle 60s for a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a really high power electric car, really quick electric car with a big battery pack, you know, it, it's, it's kind of in there, you know. Um you know, overall, you know, it's got some great, great attributes. Overall, it's a, it's a nice car. You know, I like it a lot. The improvements they've made, for sure, have made a big difference to this. And yes, it's a car that you could absolutely go and do a great job with for quite some time to come. It's brilliant. It's, you know, for the, the fact that you've, you're making cars like this in the UK. And that for me is it's got to be a, a big winner for it as well. You know, it is it's, it's the ability to be able to do things like that is stunning, stunning. Do we need to buy and manufacture and, and or take things from everywhere else around the world when we have an ability to make and develop our own electric future too? And I think that is um, is super important. So we're back at base, and, and um, I have to say. Overall, absolutely amazing, great job. Um, it's quick, it turns really well, the turning circle is, is, is amazing. Um, reversing camera is great. Overall, really nice thing, really nice thing. Um, well thought out for me, it could be a little bigger. If I drive it better, I'd get more out of the, of the battery pack and, and I think if we can just have a quick look there, we've now got it on three miles to the kilowatt hour over the last um, you know 40 50 minutes but uh, again that, 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 that you have to drive it very sensibly to get to that and I think that's uh, going to be part of the the journey for a lot of people and how they drive their electric vehicles to get the very very most out of them because as you would with your diesel car or petrol car you're looking to try and get a, a really good um, miles per gallon we're looking for miles per kilowatt hour because your new fuel is going to be your electricity so guys, we come to another end of another short video and of course, you know, I'd love to be able to get into much more detail when we start on um, our electric journey. Of course, if you want to get into more detail and you want to talk to us about 
EV, hydrogen, technologies in commercial vehicles as well as cars, infrastructure, charging points, all of those things that mean that you are able to get on your journey when it comes into electric vehicles, alternative fuels and zero emissions. Please give the guys at ProGreen uh, a call. And of course, everything you see, you know, we, we, we're able to help you with and get on that journey. I'd say today I was supported by our friends at uh, a, an amazing company based in, in St. Helens, PSD. And this is their own car and, and, and Ben, I've been able to borrow it from Ben today to, to show you what this car is capable of doing. Um, but hey, let's try and keep it, keep it real. Love talking to you guys and we'll be back again very, very soon. Take care.